Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. <laughs> um, yeah, hi everybody. It's Positive Energy coming at you with Lisa T. And we're doing the language of letting go with Lisa T. <laughs> I thought I would, um, you know, keep it interesting keep uh, evolving so I added a little uh, interlude of tune for you today so okay everybody we are doing <laughs> okay back to business we're doing the language of letting go by Melody Beatty and today's reading is February 18th shout out Lauren happy birthday um, February 18th being right um, yeah, I don't know. I just also got a feeling that I just, um, I need to thank you all, number one, because I got a lot of, uh, last night's reading, I was feeling feeling a little discouraged and feeling like, oh, what's the point of this? I've only been doing this three weeks and I was already getting that deterring thought that says, ah, why bother? And um, just thanks to a couple of your messages, but, but of telling me to like keep it up and keep going, I was able to find some new energy today to, to like do good positive energy and, and, and feel really good about what I'm doing with you. Hang on, my dog wants to come up too. There you go. Um, yeah, just feeling good about doing this and um, I've just, I got some new hope and inspired again today. So thank you all. Okay, February 18th, being right. Recovery is not about being right. It's about allowing ourselves to be who we are and accepting others as they are. So this was like yesterday's reading was about acceptance, like really accepting ourselves, who we are, accepting our past, accepting, you know, what we look like, what we live like, um, what our circumstances are, accepting it all. And when we do, we stop fighting. We stop fighting to control things, to make it look another way, and then we can be free. So that's what recovery is really all about, healing, like I keep talking about, you know, feel it, heal it, deal with it, um, to heal all this pain so we can be free, like empty this stuff out of us, let it out. Um, after my reading last night too, sorry, this is going on longer now, I'm doing blah, blah, blah. After my reading last night though, I got a pillow actually because I was feeling frustrated yesterday. I was triggered yesterday morning. I saw something um, on social media about an ex-boyfriend and um, and I got this like anger feeling and then I felt all this guilt and shame and, and fear and um, so it, it deterred me from doing my reading last night I think or yesterday and then so after I did my reading with you guys last night, I got a pillow and I, I thought there's something in me I want it out and I got the pillow and I put it up to my face and I screamed and I got it out um it's just one way we got to find an outlet doing these videos with you is an outlet for me screaming is an outlet I did that video with my punching bag punching out that anger um finding a, a, a way to get it out without like attacking anybody or trying to control anybody or trying to change the situation just like internal with yourself healing so um, and then this helps clear us so that we can accept who we are and accept others as they are. The concept can be different for many of us. If we have lived in systems that function on the right, wrong, justice scale, you're right. I mean, I'm right, you're wrong. I'm right, you're wrong. We're right, they're wrong. That happens in groups, in, in politics. We're right, you're wrong. This whole we're right, you're wrong thing creates wars. It creates internal wars. It creates wars with couples, like an argument I'm calling a war. It creates war in the larger scale of the world. We're right, you're wrong. So we gotta let go of that kind of thinking. Hi, Michael. <laughs> Michael, I feel like you're one of my biggest fans. Thank you so much for always supporting me and encouraging me. I really appreciate you. Okay, so, um, yeah, we have lived in systems that functioned on the right, wrong, justice scale. The person who was right was okay, and the person who was wrong was shamed. Shame is a horrible thing. I am dealing with letting go of that shame. I've been doing that for a while. It's a really big work in progress. Um, shame is a horrible, horrible thing. It can really debilitate us. It can cripple us. It can, well, it has done that to me. It's debilitated me. It's crippled me. It's made me feel like I, I can't face the world, can't face myself, can't even look in the mirror without complete hate. 
Um, so yeah, shame. That's what right and wrong thinking does. The person who was right is okay, and the person who was wrong is shamed. All value and worth may have depended on being right. To be wrong meant annihilation of self and self-esteem. Those are heavy, big words. Annihilation of self. You're wrong. I annihilate you. Bad. So, in recovery, we are learning how to strive for love in our relationships and not superiority. Striving for love, not superiority. Not, I am, I'm better, you're lesser, or I'm lesser and you're better. Like, none of this hierarchy stuff. All the same, striving for love. Um, yes, we may need to make decisions about people's behavior from time, from time to time. Yes, we we got we have to have healthy boundaries, and that doesn't mean we, this doesn't mean we take abuse. This means that we don't if if there if you know if we're feeling like an uncomfortable situation, we can remove ourselves, but we don't need to attack another person or a situation and, and attack even with our thinking. You know, and say oh those blah 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 or they're so stupid or how could they like that's like attack thinking. Um, so instead we, we can remove ourselves or create boundaries, but we don't need to attack. So we may to, need to make decisions about people's behaviors from time to time. If someone is hurting us, here you go. We need to stand up for ourselves. We have a responsibility to set boundaries and take care of ourselves. There we go. <laughs> but we do not need to justify taking care of ourselves by condemning someone else. So we don't, just because we're taking care of, we don't need to condemn someone else. So we need to stop pointing that finger out and just see what I can do. Point it back at me. Um, stand up for ourselves, we are, ourselves. But we do not need to justify taking care of ourselves by condemning, condemning someone else. We can avoid the trap of focusing on others instead of ourselves. It is a trap. I wasted, not wasted, but I spent a lot of time in the last four years focusing on someone else, the, 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 the person in my life, the, the romantic relationship in my life, focusing on them and seeing like, how they were affecting me and what their behaviors were and trying to help them and, and trying to figure them out. And I, and I, in doing that, I missed this, I missed figuring this out and trying to help this. Um, so, but it's like, it's like a habit to like look outward instead of look in. We gotta, we gotta train ourselves, look in, look in, look in, reel it in, reel it in. Um, so do, 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 do. in recovery, we are learning that we do not need to, Oh wait, where did I go? Um, in recovery, we are learning that we do, oh, uh, where did I, I'm sorry guys, okay. We do not need to justify taking care of ourselves uh, by condemning someone else. We can avoid the trap of focusing on others instead of ourselves, yes. In recovery, we are learning that what we do needs to be right only for us. It's right for me. It doesn't have to do with anybody else. What's right for me now? Not, not like, again, reeling it in, like, it's, it's a really about this like world that we live in really really starting to learn about this world that we live in in here and learning what's right for us what others do is their business and needs to be right only for them and their what their right is can look completely different or completely opposite from our right we're all walking our own path it's tempting to rest in the superiority of being right and in analyzing other people's motives and actions yeah we can like feel like Oh, he's so stupid. He shouldn't do that. And then we feel this righteousness, this superiority. Nah, it doesn't. That's not sustaining. That's not reality. That's not um, something we can, you know, push forward from or build a foundation on. Um, again, no pointing the finger out. Let's see what I can do. Like, well, how can I change? Where? Let it start with me. Um, so in analyze. So, but it's more rewarding to look deeper within. There you go. So I'll say that again. It's tempting to rest in the superiority of being right and in analyzing other people's motives and actions, but it's more rewarding to look deeper within. Okay, here's today's prayer. Today, I will remember that I don't have to hide behind being right. We hide behind being right. I don't have to justify what I want and need with saying something is right or wrong. I can let myself be who I am. I can let myself be who I am. Neither right nor wrong, just who I am. Neither right nor wrong, just who I am. And that was the language of letting go <laughs>
Oh, terrible, right? It's terrible, but it's okay. I'm getting better and better every day. Thanks for watching, everybody. Love you. <laughs>